Hello, and welcome to week three of Respiratory Diseases of Poultry. Today, we will be talking about three more respiratory diseases. First, a quick disclaimer. These webinars are for educational purposes only. We will not diagnose any disease or prescribe any treatment for individual birds or flocks. Please contact your veterinarian for questions on specific disease diagnosis and treatment. First, a bit about me. My name is Eliza Tice. I was born and raised in Little Falls, Minnesota, where I raised backyard layer and broiler chickens. I attended the University of Minnesota for animal science and did a summer program at the University of Wisconsin-Madison that earned me a poultry emphasis. I'm currently a third year veterinary student who also is earning um, a master's of public health. Um, I'm a student member of the AAAP, which is an organization for poultry veterinarians. I'm president of the Production Animal Medicine Club and working at the Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory on the necropsy floor. And I am super excited to talk with you all today, so let's dig in. These are the objectives I hope you'll take away from this presentation. I'll go over them um, in more detail in the next couple slides. You'll see a variation of this slide a lot throughout the presentation um, to guide you as to where we are for each disease. So first, we'll talk about recognizing the disease, then we'll talk about managing it, and finally, um, how to prevent disease. These are the diseases we'll be talking about today. Uh, infectious laryngotracheitis, or ILT, infectious bronchitis virus, or IBV, and mycoplasma infection. First, we'll be discussing infectious laryngotracheitis, abbreviated ILT. Before we begin, let's break down the name infectious laryngotracheitis. Infectious means that the disease is contagious and can be spread from bird to bird. Laryngotrachea refers to the parts of the bird's body that are affected, the larynx and the trachea. So let's look at the picture on the right here. The larynx, which is also known as the voice box, is right here um, at the top of the throat. And the trachea is the windpipe, and that's all this. Um, so it goes from the larynx all the way almost down to the lungs. The last part of the name is itis, which means inflammation. So you'll see that with like redness, swelling, heat, and pain. Um, this disease affects both layer and broiler chickens. A few important notes about ILT. First, it's a virus. This means that antibiotics will not treat this disease. Infectious laryngotracheitis is more specifically a herpes virus. Herpes viruses have a unique feature called latency. This means that the virus can hide within the bird's body, not causing any disease, but then it'll reactivate when it, see, when it senses that the bird's defenses are lowered, like during times of stress. If you've ever had a cold sore, you know all about the latency of herpes viruses. It strikes at peak times of stress. Finally, ILT is an enveloped virus. Like the picture on the right, there is an envelope around the virus. This envelope is made of fats, which are easily broken apart by many common disinfectants. The virus can't survive in the environment without its envelope. This means that cleaning and disinfecting are very effective methods to decrease the amount of virus in the environment. All right, now let's talk about recognizing ILT. Birds that are affected by ILT can have mild or more severe um, cases. So clinical signs of mild cases, the birds might just have swollen eyelids or, or discharge from their eyes and nostrils. Severely affected birds may have blood coming from their nostrils and or their mouth um, with blood staining on the feathers near their face. Um, they may raise and extend their neck during breathing. And this is sometimes referred to as pump handle breathing because it's a bit reminiscent of an old hand pump well, like the one pictured here. 
The next slide contains a video of chickens severely affected with ILT. So I just want to give you a warning that there is a bit of blood on the next slide. Next, we will discuss management of ILT if you find a bird or birds in your flock that are affected. The first thing you should do if you suspect a bird has ILT is to isolate her. Make sure that she has easy food and water access, but keep her away from the rest of the flock. To prevent the rest of your flock from getting infected, care for her last so you don't pick it up from her um, and then carry that disease to the rest of the flock. Once a bird is infected, there is no specific treatment for ILT. Remember, this is a virus, so antibiotics are not effective against it. Many birds live through um, an ILT infection, uh, but remember that it's a herpes virus, and herpes is forever, so she will be, have this infection for the rest of her life. It just becomes latent and kind of hides. Um, it, you, it does make sense to vaccinate the rest of your flock um, if you catch an infection of ILT early because it is a relatively slow spreading disease. Vaccination is recommended in endemic areas of ILT. So endemic means that um, the disease is regularly found there. Um, according to Dr. Porter, who is a poultry pathologist on faculty here at the University of Minnesota College of Veterinary Medicine, um, infectious laryngotracheitis is one of the most common diseases in backyard flocks in Minnesota. Uh, Dr. Porter recommends tissue culture origin vaccine and single vials can be purchased at Murray McMurray Hatchery. Um, I'm sure there's other places as well. I know of this one. If you have questions about vaccinating your specific flock, definitely um, have a conversation with your veterinarian about it. All right, now let's talk about preventing ILT, which is the goal. Biosecurity is the single most important way to prevent ILT in backyard flocks. Basic biosecurity is easy and important. So examples of practicing biosecurity would include having dedicated shoes for the coop, um, appropriately cleaning and disinfecting the coop um, and the equipment used regularly, and um, being mindful of who visits your chickens and whose chickens you visit. So stay tuned for Abby's talk in a couple of weeks to discuss biosecurity more in depth. Um, in addition to biosecurity, it's very important not to mix vaccinated and unvaccinated birds because depending on the type of vaccine that you use, um, the vaccinated birds could potentially get the unvaccinated birds sick. And again, that depends on the type of vaccine you, you use. It's not um, always. Um, and since a bird could get infected and not show any signs for up to 12 days, you should isolate any new birds from the rest of the flock for at least that long. All right, let's move on to infectious bronchitis virus, um, often abbreviated as IBV, and you'll also sometimes just see it abbreviated IB. Okay, again, we're gonna break down the words. Um, infectious, we already learned, means spreadable, um, contagious from bird to bird, and they can get it through their environment. Um, bronch, again, refers to the part of the bird's body that is affected. Let me see if I can highlight this again here. Um, so these are the bronchi right here and here. Um, so that's between the trachea and the lungs. And um, it's, not the most, it's not the most perfect name because the bronchi are affected, but there's a lot of other body systems that are infected um, from this virus as well. So there's the naming of medicine for you. Um, and then itis, we know, means inflammation. So redness, swelling, heat, pain, etc. cetera. Um, infectious bronchitis is primarily a disease of laying chickens, um, but only a disease of chickens. It does not affect other species of poultry. 
as the name suggests, um, infectious bronchitis virus is caused by a virus. Like ILT, antibiotics do not treat this disease. It is caused by a coronavirus. Um, don't get too excited. You're not going to get COVID-19 from your chicken. There are hundreds of types of coronaviruses, and IBV is an entirely different like group of coronaviruses from the type that humans get. Um, it's only 16% similar to the virus that causes COVID-19. And um, if Google is telling me correctly, humans are actually more closely related to bananas than that. Um, so I don't think we need to worry at all about it. Much like ILT, um, infectious bronchitis is an enveloped virus. So those common disinfectants do work well against it. And um, like I said before, only chickens are affected. Okay, I think we're ready. Let's learn to recognize infectious bronchitis virus. If you have young chicks, um, oftentimes you'll be able to tell they are sick right away when you walk in the coop. They'll be huddled together. They'll appear weak and depressed. Um, they'll often be coughing or sneezing. They have nose and eye discharge. The adult birds that have um, infectious bronchitis virus will also have respiratory signs like coughing and sneezing. Um, and if they are laying eggs, the eggs will be affected um, most of the time. They'll like be wrinkled or misshapen. They might not have um, normal shells. Uh, so this disease spreads really quickly. The, the whole flock is going to be affected basically no matter what you do. So the good news is that um, death rates are usually very low. So how about managing IBV? Let's dive in. For young chicks, increasing the room temperature may be helpful to make them more comfortable. Um, sometimes adding water to their feed, making a warm mash will encourage them to eat. Uh, because this is a respiratory disease, adequate ventilation is super important. Um, we already know that antibiotics will not treat infectious bronchitis virus. However, um, secondary bacterial infections often occur after an initial infection of IBV. It's like when a baby has a cold and then they get an ear infection on top of it. Um, these bacterial infections can sometimes be treated with antibiotics. So if you're in this situation, make sure to talk to your veterinarian. All right, now we're going to discuss preventing infectious bronchitis. Like I talked about for ILT, biosecurity is the most important thing you can do to prevent IBV as well. Um, there is a vaccine available for infectious bronchitis virus, but it is not recommended in backyard flocks because for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, usually it's sold in really high quantities. You have to buy thousands of doses. Um, and number two, there are a lot of subtypes of this virus. Um, like I said, there's like a whole bunch of types of coronaviruses. And then even within like this infectious bronchitis virus is a bunch of different subtypes. Um, and the vaccine would not cover all of the subtypes. It needs to be tailored to the specific type that your birds would get. And it's just impossible to know um, which which type that would be. The incubation period of this disease um, in birds is up to four days. So make sure to isolate your new birds for at least this long when they come into the flock. That's going to be easy because you're already isolating them for 12 days to monitor for infectious laryngotracheitis, um, which is the last disease we talked about. All right, and lastly, we're gonna move on to mycoplasma infection in backyard poultry. Unlike the previous two diseases, mycoplasma infections are caused by a bacteria. So now we can talk about antibiotic use a bit more. Um, but of course, there's a caveat. Mycoplasmas um, are a special type of bacteria. Most bacteria have a cell wall and many antibiotic drugs target that cell wall and that's how they kill the bacteria. Mycoplasmas do not have a cell wall. This means that veterinarians need to prescribe special antibiotics so that the antibiotics will work against um, this bacteria. Mycoplasma is 
also known as an opportunistic pathogen. So basically, mycoplasma usually doesn't cause disease unless there's already another disease that has weakened the bird's immune system. There are many different types of mycoplasmas with different last names. Um, for example, mycoplasma synovia, mycoplasma ioa. Um, that's one, the, the one that's of respiratory concern um, that we're going to talk about today is mycoplasma galliceptacum, which is oftentimes abbreviated MG. Um, and I'm going to share with you also one of my favorite fun facts about mycoplasma. Um, if you look at them under the microscope, they look like a fried egg. So that's the picture. Okay, let's talk about recognizing mycoplasma infections. Swollen sinuses are often the most obvious sign of a mycoplasma infection. You can see in the turkey on the top picture has really swollen sinuses. They bulge out so much because birds, unlike humans, don't have bones to encase their sinuses. You can feel your cheekbones and birds just don't have those. Um, in addition to these upper respiratory signs that you'll see, like the watery eyes and maybe the coughing, um, you will also notice more systemic signs. So you could see decreased egg production, decreased feed intake that might result in weight loss. Um, oftentimes it's hard to tell when birds are losing weight because they've got their fluffy feathers. But once you pick them up, um, you can notice that they feel lighter. Um, and again, mycoplasma is an opportunistic pathogen. So um, you, a disease, a, an infection of mycoplasma often happens after or during an outbreak of other diseases, especially um, it likes to happen after infectious bronchitis virus um, or Newcastle disease. All right, let's discuss managing mycoplasma infection once it's already present in the flock. First and foremost, talk to your veterinarian. Um, although they usually don't fully resolve the infection, Antibiotics can help to alleviate clinical signs and make your birds more comfortable. If a single bird is infected, isolate her from the rest of the flock, make sure she has you know, her food and water available, um, and practice good biosecurity in the order that you're taking care of your birds like we talked about before. Um, and in severe cases, your veterinarian may suggest um, that, that you drain the sinuses and then flush them with antibiotics. All right, lastly, we're going to talk about preventing mycoplasma infections, and I bet you know what's coming. Biosecurity is the most important way to prevent mycoplasma infection, just like it was the most important way to prevent all of the other diseases we've talked about. It's super important, so I hope you're getting really excited for Abby's presentation um, on biosecurity in a couple weeks here. Um, Another key way to avoid mycoplasma infection in your flock is to only get your chicks from NPIP certified hatcheries. That stands for National Poultry Improvement Plan. They have a nice website you can go look up. They do all kinds of things. Um, mycoplasma is just one of the things they do. Um, and they have special breeding programs that they use. So if you wanna look at the hatcheries in your state that are NPIP certified, you can go ahead and um, go to this link that I put on the slide. Um, and if your hatchery is in Minnesota, if they are certified by the Minnesota Board of Animal Health, um, that automatically does include an NPIP certification. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you've learned something new. Um, please feel free to contact me um, at my listed email here with any questions that you have.